Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of War Thunder. In this episode I will be talking about RP points, um, Silver Lions, and just generally telling you how you can get them more efficiently. What is the best way of getting them? Now first of all, what is RP points and Silver Lions? RP points are what are used to unlock vehicles. We can see here the A6M5 got 8,500 points. We need 50,000. Silver Lions are what are used to buy the, the um, aircraft as well as modifications. Um, we can see here 98,000 to buy the A6M5 and another 28,000 to buy the crew training. Um, as I was mentioned, we've got modifications. You can see here the radiator, I need 3,300 points. It doesn't actually say how much it will cost to buy them. It will tell us how many golden eagles it will cost to buy them, but until we've actually unlocked them, we don't know. Now, we've also got something else called convertible RP. Um, most people just call it free RP. Basically, you, you get this after every match, and you can use it. You, well, you can spend golden eagles to apply them to the aircraft of your choice. Um, for example, here the LA5 FN got 10,000 XP. If we use the free RP with our golden eagles, we can get another 14,500, um, almost unlocking the plane for us. So that can um, drive down the grind a little bit. Um, but again, that will cost golden eagles. Something I've I haven't particularly used myself, but it maybe those of you who want to, I may use it when I get to the higher tiers. Now, before we even jump into a match, there are a number of things we can do with our lineups that can substantially affect how many RP or research um, silver lines we will get. Um, we go to the G5N1, we can see a, a reward is 130%. Now, that I believe represents your silver lines. Um, if we come here to the KI10. Of reserve aircraft, um, we can see a reward of 10%. Um, G5N1 again, we've got a research point bonus of 66%, so get 66% or research bonus points as a bonus. We go to the reserves again, KI10 starts off at um, 10%. We go over to the G4M, that gets a 24% bonus, the next KI49 30%, 2B36, uh, 2BL. 42, G5N1, at 66, and so on and so on. So, the higher the tier aircraft, the more points you get. And, obviously, the lower the tier, um, the less points and silver lines you get. But, before we, um, but before you even jump into a match, you, if you look on the stat card, G5N1, most effective at researching vehicles of tier 3 and 5 ranks. So, basically, um, tier 3, tier 4, tier 5, you get the normal amount of points. If you try to research tier 2 or 1, I believe you get a 60% reduction, so you only get something like 40% points. I actually found this out the hard way, because I was using the TBM3. Um, for the simple reason, it's a premium, and you get something like 4,000 kilograms worth of bombs. Um, something you don't really get with the Russians until you get to the year, year 2. And I was using this plane. Um, if we go over the stat card, research point bonus 112%, reward 100% plus 100%. And I was getting a decent amount of silver lines, but my research points were, I can't remember the exact number, I think they were like 80 or 70%, you might see it popping up on screen if I've popped up, if I've um, left the screenshot, but um, I was not getting anywhere near the amount of um, RP points I was get. I should have got if I was using the PE2, for example. So before you even jump into a match, um, look at what tier your aircraft is, for example using tier one aircraft. I think I, I did that once just playing around in the reserves and I think I only got 40% of the um, RP points. So obviously if you want to unlock your vehicle use something around the same tier and also look at the vehicle before the one you're unlocking. Go to the LA5 FN here. Um, you can see efficient progress from the LA5 F 130%. Basically if you use the LA5 F you get 130% of the points rather than a um, hundred. So if I fly with the, if I'm trying to unlock the LA5FN, it's logical to use the LA5. If I'm used, trying to unlock the old 10946, logical to use the old 10. So but simple things, but something that can sometimes be overlooked um, before going into a match. Well, I managed to find the TBM3. So you can see here only 40%, even though it's a premium aircraft. So definitely be careful of that when taking out your lower tier premiums when unlocking higher tier aircraft. While we're actually on this screen, um, I might as well say how I show how the 
forty percent is um comes from. I believe your modification research the three thousand five hundred and fourteen, and it then does um the percentage of that. So forty percent of three thousand five hundred and fourteen, if I've worked this out right, is about. Well, I've got 1,405, I've got 1,404, so I think it's safe to say vehicle research is roughly whatever percentage of your modification. So try and have that as 100% or more, and you should be doing well for yourself. We can also see the 3RP. It appears to be the same as modifications research, and looking through some of my other um, um, game files, it does appear to be the same um, as the modification research in them. Uh, sometimes when I look at it with the message board at the top, it seems to be a bit different, the post-battle um, report. Um, I don't know why that is, um, but as far as I'm aware, it should be the same as your modifications research. Though, like I said, sometimes it shows up different in the mes message reports. Um, it could be um, done differently, but as far as I'm aware, it's through the modifications research. Now, something else that can help boost up your RP points and silver lines is a premium account. You can see I haven't got one. I don't think I've ever had one. I might have got one once for um, free. I think Gaijin did some sort of uh, uh, competition or reward. I um, can't remember why, but I had it for like two days. Um, basically, for 100 Golden Eagles, you can get 200% RP in all game modes, 150% lines in for active actions in random battles, 200% lines for... Um, reward for battle time in random battles, 150% lines reward in other game modes, um, increases the limit of dynamic campaign missions which give rewards, now it's more to make squads consist of more than two players and floor slots for decals, um, you know, because you only get two slots, um, I've, like I said, I haven't really used one particularly or properly, could be, I mean, obviously 200% is a lot better, is quite good, um, it's really up to you if you want to spend the money on getting the Golden Eagles. I personally wouldn't like myself. Like I said, I don't particularly use them. Um, you know, just sitting there from some competition, uh, Golden Battles thing. I haven't spent them on, I haven't bought any premium account. Uh, but again, just so you know, the option is there. Um, and let you make the decision, really. Another thing to remember is how much... Um, Depending on game mode, you will get different points. So we can see here we've got arcade selected. Go to the I-15. 10% reward. Now we click on realistic. Close this. Oh, wrong button. Close this down. Open it up again. Go to the I-15. It's now changed to a reward 30%. We still go, don't get the research point bonus, but we do get the reward bonus. Um, you can see here that all of these rewards have just gone up massively. The MIG-3. 130%. Let's go to the MIG 15. Re reward 380. We're going to change that to simulator now. And it's gone up to 470. Now the reward is, um, it increases more from arcade to realistic than realistic to simulator. So make that what you will. Um, and, you know, we'll let, take that into account when choosing which um, mode to play on. If you, um, arcade can actually work out better because you can get a lot more matches done than in realistic but still realistic you can make a decent amount of silver lines and RP points. So at this point you've taken your plane into the battle and you're trying to get some RP, trying to get some silver lines and you ask yourself the question which is a better target to go for? The aircraft, um, getting a kills against enemy aircraft, kills against ground targets or kills against bases? Now I actually tested this a little bit and you should be seeing um, some of my test results coming up in a second. Now in the end I did these tests with the G5N1 because that's the first aircraft I just happened to finish the test with. Um, now the, you can see here I've been attacked by an enemy aircraft. Um, I was trying to do bombing, uh, I've shot down the aircraft, got 1,670 um, silver lions and 99 points. Um, also got a critical hit which interestingly enough is about a tenth of the kill and a few hits as well and 10th of the silver line, so kills are definitely better than hits, but they can obviously add up. Now after shooting down the aircraft, I managed to start my bombing again, managed to get a medium tank. We can see here 43 points and 1,630 silver lines. So not as much as an aircraft, but you only need to get two ground kills to basically equal one aircraft, and you still get practically the same amount of silver lines, so already we can see there's a bit of a for silver lines at least, there's a bit of a tendency to um, sort of focus on ground targets if you want to get the lions, and you can still make a decent amount of RP too. 
Now you might not be able to read this properly, but um, it's for base damaged and zone destroyed. Um, this pic, um, yeah, this picture. For the damage, we got 91 points and 1,040 silver lines. And for zone destroyed, we got 130 silver lines and about 1,570 um silver silver lines. Um, so 130 points, sorry, 1,570 silver lines. Now again, this is also interesting because it's not quite as much as a um, destroying a normal ground target for even destroying the base but the RP points are more than a aircraft zone destroyed and basically equal for just damaging it now I shoot I think the damage just applies to dropping any bomb in it um, and doing significant damage so um, bombing bases seems like it could actually be a good way of getting RP and silver lines so we've looked at the various different ways you can get RP in a match and we've looked at how many points and how many silver lines you get. So which is the best way? Now, looking at it from sheer points, the best way is obviously to just destroy a base. 130 points. Obviously, this, you need a heavy bomber for this, and it may take a while. Second place is actually aircraft. But again, it's not exactly easy to kill aircraft. Um, I usually get, at best, about seven kills in a match. So if I'd done that with um, a plane with the equivalent um, point gain as the G5N1, I'd get about 600 RP. Not bad, but, but you know, not great either. Um, obviously, there's only three bases as well, so we can't exactly take much from that. So, you know, we only get about uh, um, 300, sorry, 420 points from that. Um, after that, damaging the base will get you 91 points. If you could do that a few times, you could actually boost up your and destroy all the bases. You could theoretically boost it up to something similar near to the um, as the plane game, but again, it's still not going to be quite a lot. Um, ground units. Now this is actually quite could be quite a good way of doing it because obviously you only get 50 points, but you can easily destroy a lot of ground units. I didn't actually take a picture of it, but um, well, I might have, but I've lost it. But I actually, man, in just two runs of a hindcore, I managed to take out eight ground units. Now, if it had got the same RP gain as a um, as the um, G5N, I would have got something like 300 points in that one run. Now, of course, that you could easily get shot down, but, um, but if you can stay alive long enough, you could get a decent amount of points out of this. Now, we'll quickly go to Silver Lions. Um, Base destroyed, um, well, for the most of the silver lines is for aircraft shot down. So, 1,670 with the G5N. So, but then, um, ground units is second best, 1,630. So, so, that's not much worse than shooting down an aircraft, so just for downing, just for killing one ground unit. So, that could be quite a good way of getting silver lines. Um, second best is base destroy, and worst is, um, well, base damage. So the best for RP gain is for is destroying bases on the total, but obviously there's only a few bases. And the best for um, silver lions is um, destroying aircraft, closely followed by a ground unit. So which is the best at the end of the day? Um, like for getting points, really, it's up to personal preference. I make a lot of points and silver lions for bombing because I'm a very good bomber pilot. I you know, I can get to my target, drop bombs, and defend myself. Um, for those of you who are better fighter pilots, you may get a lot more, a lot more RP points and silver lines from shooting down aircraft. Um, really, at the end of the day, it's up to you. Um, just to quickly show you, uh, you could look at your service record to see which is the best aircraft, but it may be a bit misleading. Um, if we go to RP gained. I actually have most of my RP from the B5N2. An aircraft I've not used in many, many months. Now, that's from mainly destroying ground units, 83. So you can make a lot of um, points from destroying ground targets. Silver Lions I haven't made so much, although I've made a decent amount. Um, actually, most of these, as you can see, are bombers. Like I said, I get most of my points from bombing. I'm a good bomber pilot. Um, except for the bow fighter, that's mainly from... Um, air kills, but yeah, still a decent amount of RP. Silver Lions, yeah, all bombers again. Um, 
So you, you, for me, looking at my own stats to see which is the best aircraft to use can be skew it quite a bit because one, I use a lot of bombers, and well, I haven't used a lot of well the these these few aircraft at the top I have used recently, but RP points wise, um, most of these I haven't used in a long time. Um, haven't used the B five N two in a while. Bow fighter Wellington, or well, the Wellington I've used recently, and the Junkers. The rest I haven't used in a while, so looking at your own service record may not be the best way to see which is the best to use. So we've looked at how to get points and golden eagle, um, sorry, silver lines and points from in the game, in the actual playing of the game. But there are other ways of doing it. Go to profile and go to achievements. See here you've got challenges um, for things like bombing, um, 10,000 points or 10,000 targets damaged, uh, torpedoes. Kills for gunners, kills for um on against certain vehicles. Um where's America? Um it's down here. If I destroy another seven American vehicles, I'll get thousand lions and a hundred free RP. So quite good, um at least the points. I mean the silver lions. Not great, but still it's better than nothing. But if we come down here to aircraft, we've got the master challenges. Basically it says vehicles purchased, but it's basically if you ace a vehicle, so you unlock all the unlocks on it all the modifications and buy them all and that will count as one vehicle unlocked so if I've done this for all of the nations I have 20 aced vehicles for USSR 10,000 points um, well, it starts off at 10,000 for one uh, 25,000 for five 50,000 for ten and 100,000 for twenty and this is for every single um, country so 500,000 plus points there um, 500,000 just for the fourth bit of the challenge, more for the rest of it. And you've got more, multitasker. 100 vehicles, um, elited or aced. Um, you could do that just by doing these five challenges. Then you've got another one, 104 out of 200. I'm, I haven't really been focusing on getting all the modifications so far. There are other challenges, of course. Um, not all of them that great. Um, for example, just trying to find it. Uh, Spend 30,000 lions and auto repair, reward 30,000 lions. Um, you get free RP, but you don't really get many lions because you have to spend it to earn it back. Uh, there are other ones like for skins and titles, possibly. Uh, maybe not titles, but for skins and medals. The w rewards aren't that great, but especially when you're quite higher tier. But for the lower tiers, it can, you know, get you a bit of extra money. So bear that in mind. Now, one um, way of getting RP points and silver lines that is often overlooked is um, the dynamic campaign and single missions. We'll look at dynamic campaign first. Uh, we're starting. We're not actually going to do it, but we're starting. Uh, Japan 1944. Yep. Yeah, just pulls it while it loads. Oh, it's loading instantly this time. Uh, just some random stats um, on what forces we have. Apply. And we got basic missions here. They don't get you many good points. Um, Ships bombing mission 100 points and 240 lines. And once you've done like five of these, you stop earning points. But if you're bored and don't want to do online, you can still get points for doing this. Not great, but not, you know, it's better than nothing. But where you really get points, if we go back, is from single missions such as um, Corsair. I'm just going to show you a clip from when I did it. But um, you can see here two and a half thousand lines, 750 points. Um, just show you a clip from when I did this mission. Now I'm obviously not going to show you the whole mission, I'll just um, show you the first few seconds, just a very basic loading screen, um, like you're going on any normal mission, should be um, loaded up quickly, uh, just give it two seconds to load, um, basically just showing you how easy it is to get some points on here, so you see it's just a fly, follow the designated route. So we'll quickly skip to the end of this mission and I'll show you what I mean about um, getting points. Skip to the end of the mission, mission accomplished, all right, it took me literally like three, five minutes to do that mission. It was ridiculously easy, but we'll see in a second, once this loading screen's gone, um, apologies for the loading screen, I don't know why I forgot to cut it out um, when I recorded, but we got 2,500 lines and a couple of points, enough to unlock us the F4U1C, and I've put those points into the B24, took me three minutes or so, I think it said there. And I've put the points into the B24, so they're there. And then I've switched over to the FAF Bearcat for research. So back in um, the 
present day. If we go to the B24, 499 points. Started researching the FAF Fair Cat. Now, so now I've already got some points into the B24. Not many, but it's there, so saves me a bit of a grind um, later on. And some of these missions aren't great. Um, hills overhead, 150 points, 500 lines, which is, you know, rubbish, even with simulator battles. It adds 75 plus 75, because it adds the realistic bonuses in. You're still going to get less than 500 points or so. But then if we go to the Western Front, one of the missions I've unlocked here, Battle of the Ruhr, 1,200. Plus another 600 for um, doing it realistic, and then plus 600 again for realistic, so another 1,200. 2,400 um, just for doing one single mission, which is, you know, takes five minutes. Um, it took me five minutes in arcade, might take longer in simulator, but it doesn't damage any of your vehicles. You don't get modification parts for it, unfortunately, but. You know, it goes towards your research, can save you some time, you get some free silver lines, and the missions are generally a lot of fun. So, yeah, basically, that's just a little guide to modifications, well, how to unlock RP points and silver lines. Um, yeah, well, um, it's just a quick little guide today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope you learned something from it. I, you know, because it took me a long time to learn all of this myself. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave feedback, um, subscribe if you like these videos. Um, give me ideas for what other videos you want to see, if you want to see any other guide videos. And, well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.